Hello, everyone, and welcome to week three of the GBA D League. Your New York and Polion are really, really in need of a win right now, but we are facing off against Randy and the Texas Rangers, a fantastic battler and fantastic team. I have prepped harder for this battle, this single battle, than I think any battle in the past, so if I lose it, it's either on me or it's my Pokemon's fault. One of the two hacks are going to throw this battle away from me. I do have some moves that are not 100% accurate, but we'll see how this goes. His team that I'm predicting him to bring, Mega Low Punny, Rotom Heat, Celesteela, Latios, Shaman, and Mamoswine. God, just saying that sounds gross in my mouth. I'm going to bring to counter that Ditto, Vikavolt, Tornadus Eye, Excadrill, Victini, and Mega Venusaur. We do have, hopefully, the answers that we need in order to handle Randy and the team that he's bringing. Just a reminder, as always, if you want to watch his side of the battle, link is in the description below. If you have not seen the team builder in the sets that I'm bringing in, how I'm going to try to counter Randy, go watch the team builder. Link is in the description below. With that all out of the way, though, I will get out of your faces and see you guys back here in a second with that battle. All right, everyone, welcome back. Let's get our first look at what Randy's bringing and get right into this. We have... I get so nervous for these battles. All right, here we go, here we go. Calm down. Celesteela, Megalopunny, Mamoswine, Shaman, Rotom, Heat, and Latios. All right. So it's literally exactly the team that I was most afraid of him bringing. But on the flip side, his only counter to a Mega Venusaur lead really is his Latios. Do I predict him to lead with the Latios, expecting me to lead with my Mega Venusaur? Now, I've done this battle a handful of times, and if he does lead with his Latios against that Mega Venusaur, I do get put into a bit of a sticky situation. But... If he doesn't lead with it, if he leads with literally anything else, <clears throat> if he leads with the Mamoswine to set up rocks, if he leads with Shaman, uh, if he leads with Mega Low Punny, everything else is fine. Even the Rotom doesn't do that much to Mega Venusaur. Even a Will O Wisp doesn't scare me that much. So, what, what do I think? Do I think he's going to do that Latios lead? If he leads Latios and I lead Mega Venusaur, I'm in a bit of a bind. Um,. My counter lead to Latios would be Tornadus, but I think he's more likely to lead Mamoswine against my team than he is to lead Latios. So I'm going to go with the Mega Venusaur. We are going to see... I mean, I got his Pokemon right. I've done a lot of prep for this battle. I have some tricks up my sleeve. We'll see how this goes. That Mega Low Punny, obviously a big problem for my team, unless I can get Ditto in safely on it. If he is running a like power up punch last resort low punny, that is honestly the biggest threat to my team. That is the scariest possible set he could be running. Um, but, you know, we do what we gotta do in that case. Um, Ditto goes for power up punch, gets some damage off, and then Excadrill tries to finish it off with an earthquake, choice scarf earthquake. So, um, we, we will do what we have to do. There's the mega low punny, I, I assume. I was just guessing that. There's the Mega Lopunny, and we are getting this battle started. Now, Venusaur is going to stare down a Mega Lopunny. I don't hate this matchup. We prepped for this matchup. This Venusaur takes a return just fine. Um, and I can go for a quick Sleep Powder if I want to. I don't see Shaman coming in on this, on this uh, particular play here. He could just go straight for the Fake Out. But getting this Mega Lopunny to sleep would be amazing. So I am going to click Sleep Powder first turn. He could fake out. That is totally un like within reason. Um, but we're going to see it's Mega. It's obviously got Scrappy. That doesn't really matter. I always write down their abilities, though. Um, and he... Okay, we're going to Mega Evolve as well. So we got some some early Megas here going, uh, getting started. But Mega Venusaur versus the Mega Lopunny. Um, let's see what he's going to start with. Here's the fake out. All right, so that's fine. Um... We don't mind the fake out at all. It does like, yeah, it does 30, um, 30 damage. So let's take a look though. Now that we know that does 30 damage, that is probably adamant. Um, yeah, that's adamant low punny. So it's not jolly, which is interesting. Now I don't think he has to be jolly in order to outspeed anything on my team. So I think adamant makes the most sense. Um, but it is good to know it's impossible for it to do 30 damage if it's a jolly low punny. So that is actually great information. So we know that he's adamant. I'm still going to click Sleep Powder. I still don't see Shaman switching into a Venusaur. Um, even if it has Psychic or something, I just don't see that being a safe switch in. Um, now the real trick is if he goes for a return here and it does, you know, 37, 38%, um, then I'm, and I miss my Sleep Powder. That's the worst possible thing. Parsable? Worst Parsable. 
There is the Shaman, so he does go right into it on my Venusaur. He does get access to knowledge about my Sleep Powder. Now, Shaman uh, could easily have Psychic. Let's go take a look. Uh, it can't be Z Psychic or anything. Um, but let's take a look at like a modest Shaman Psychic to me right now. Um, that is something to fear. Uh, it does about 50%. Sludge Bomb's looking like it's going to do closer to 80%. Um, I could synthesis just to scout. Um, let's like take a look at specs. It's modest psychic is going to do 62 to 73 um, percent to my Venusaur right now, which does not kill from this range no matter what. Um, I could switch out at this point, go out into something like Vika Volt. Um, I don't necessarily want to do that, but I definitely could. It does handle it pretty well. Um, the other option is clicking Sludge Bomb here and just getting a huge amount of damage off on anything except for the Celesteela, which why would he switch into this and then the Celesteela? Honestly, that's not a great idea in my opinion. He would have just gone straight into the Celesteela there. So I'm going to click Sludge Bomb here. Uh, let's see. He's going to go for that Psychic. Even a Choice Spec Psychic will not kill. Um, that does... So we were at 156. We're down to 155. Or, or excuse me, just regular 55. Um... Super effective, gets about 70% off, so I don't think he's specs, but he's probably modest, max special attack. Uh, maybe Expert Belt? Um, since he did 101 damage. Uh, it looks like it might be Expert Belt. That's going to be my guess. Um, and that's going to allow me to pretty freely go into Ditto, I think. Um, Although I don't think a Ditto can necessarily take out a Shaman from this range. Um, uh, let's let's just say it's Modest Max, max Special Attack Shaman. Um, and it's got to deal with Modest Max, max Special Attack Shaman. Um, it might be able to. Um, yeah, I think Ditto is a pretty good switch. Although I really want that Ditto to become... I really do want that Ditto to become the Mega Low Pony. I want it to be safe for that later. So let's go out into my Vika Volt. No, then it has to take two hits, and I really don't want it to take two hits here. Let's go into Tornadus here. Tornadus is a pretty safe switch in. He's going to think that I have the, the uh, Flying type move, which I don't, but that's okay. Um, there's another Psychic, so maybe Specs, but not Modest Max Special Attack. Um, so let's take a look at how much damage that does to Tornadus if he's Specs, because Curiosity begs the question. I don't think he's Specs, though, based on that damage. Um, he just wanted to kill the Venusaur there. Um, yeah, he's Modest Max Special Attack, I think, so it does about 60, yeah. So he's just Modest Max Special Attack with an Expert Belt. That's my, that's my gut. Um... What is he going to switch into here? Latios? I don't think Latios comes in on a Tornadus ever, unless it's Scarf, and even then it's not a great switch. Um, knockoff doesn't quite... Maybe it does. Wait, hold on. Let's say he's holding an Expert Belt. Um, knockoff should kill from here. I don't think he has 29%. Um, that's assuming he doesn't have any bulk investment. Otherwise, Superpower is a much safer option. Um, I don't have to Z Superpower right now. I can just regular Superpower if I want to. Um, but if I think he's going to go out into the, the Celesteela, for instance, um, then I kind of want to Z. Knockoff could do it as well to this uh, this thing, but I, I kind of just want to Z Superpower. Um, I don't need Z move for anything specific, so we are just going to Z Superpower as he brings in Mick Heaterson. That's the Rotom. And uh, we're just going to, we're going to see what happens here. Um... Honestly, getting a ton of damage on this Rotom, if he's Scarfed, he's going to outspeed me, obviously, but uh, otherwise, we are going to be able to get a ton of damage on this Rotom right here and potentially knock it out on the following turn. Um, now, I don't want to stay in and let myself go down to this Rotom. He does survive it, which is expected. Um, he's got leftovers. Okay. So he's not Scarfed. So we do outspeed. So, I could go for a knockoff here. A superpower should do, um, based on how much damage that did, which was like somewhere between 50 and 70. Uh, it's 
of probably not a physically defensive Rotom. So a regular superpower should do another 30 to 45, um, which would kill. I think knockoff is probably a better play. Um, Rotom is just very frightening to my team. Also, I don't quite take it out here. So I could go into Ditto, uh, get some information about this Rotom set. He could Pain Split, which would obviously be worst case scenario. But I don't see him running Leftovers Pain Split. Um, necessarily, I could just go for a knockoff here, get rid of those Leftovers or whatever he does on the switch in. But if I lose my Tornadus, that's not going to be great. So we are just going to go out into Ditto here, uh, take a look at what his Rotom set is going to be. Obviously, this Ditto is not going to stay in for very long. Um, this Ditto is really just a pivot here to... to if he Volt Switch is fine. Um, but otherwise, it is just going to be able to eat any one hit from this Rotom. So he does go for the Thunderbolt here, um, which is reasonable. Uh, he's got the lefties. I did not mark that down. Um, and I'm going to mark down that I think the shaman is expert belt um now rotom with the leftovers is going to be getting a little bit more health let's take a look at what we're looking at overheat volt switch thunderbolt and he does have that pain split on this rotom so i can go for a volt switch here uh very freely if he does go out into the mammoth swine he does go out into the mammoth swine um that's not the end of the world um mega venusaur is a little bit lower than i want it to be uh but I can always bring in my Tornadus if he does set up the rocks, I defog, um, I outspeed if he does, and I can... Do I live an Ice Shard? I should live one Ice Shard from there. Um, maybe not. Um, so he could go for a Slow Volt Switch, or he could just Hard Switch out, um, or he could Pain Split. He wouldn't overheat in the situation. There's like no way, so I'm gonna... I could hard switch into my Excadrill, which can handle the Mammoth Swine. The problem is going for a Volt Switch and having him go into that Mammoth Swine right now is not what I want to see. Um, and I really don't want to stay in either. So I think my only... Would he overheat? Is there a chance? Is there even a single slight chance that he overheats right here? I mean, yes, he has the move and therefore he can click it. I'm going to click Volt Switch. If he does go into the Mammoth Swine here, I'm going to be really, really sad. Alright, so he does stay in. He's probably going to want to Volt Switch himself. Oh my god, if he overheats right here... What does Venusaur realistically do for me right now? What does it come in on and handle? Nothing. Megalopunny outspeeds it, takes it out. Latios outspeeds it, takes it out. Um, Rotom Heat, if he's got any investment, even without it, should outspeed and take it out. Mammoth Swine's gonna outspeed and take it out. Shaman's gonna outspeed and take it out. Celesteela should outspeed and take it out. So I think Venusaur, sacking off Venusaur is the play, um, and that'll get me a safe switch into my Excadrill. Um, and that would be, that would be okay by me. Um, it would give me a chance to either set up my rocks or... Um, or get a big uh, earthquake off on something. So there's the pain split, uh, which is part of why I went into Venusaur here. So we do know his whole set. I'm going to mark it all down. Why didn't I write it all down? Uh, pain split, volt switch, and overheat. Um, now, Venusaur, obviously not going to outspeed this thing, but and, and probably not going to survive an overheat here. Now, I could switch out again into something to take an overheat, and then like ditto, and then back into Venusaur. I don't think that play is necessarily worthwhile. Um, I think the play is going to just be click Sludge Bomb here, and if he does decide to uh, go for the overheat and take me out, that is okay. Um, that I was sacking off Venusaur anyway on the off chance he went straight for that overheat. So Rotom Heat kills Mega Venusaur with overheat, and that's uh, that's all right. I can go out into my Excadrill here to take out this Rotom. Um, that would be the only thing on my team that's really going to handle it from this range. Um, and if he does go out into the Celesteela, my answer is to go into Victini, and I do have that Victini EV to really handle Celesteela. So that's okay. I can just go into this. Uh, if he decides to go into Celesteela, he decides to go into Celesteela. I have to click Earthquake. I mean, I have no choice. Um, the other option being Stealth Rock, but he's at minus two. Um, Excadrill, he doesn't have, he doesn't have Will-O-Wisp. Rotom H, Overheat at minus two. Doesn't kill. 
I have to be healthy enough to take a... I have to be healthy enough to take a fake out. But that's it. And overheat doesn't kill. I'm gonna click Stealth Rock here. Um, because he isn't gonna stay in. There's no way, and there's no reason for me to just click Earthquake with no reason, like, for, you know, knowing that the Celesteel is coming out and that I get walled by it. Um, so we're just gonna go for the Stealth Rock. Um, which is gonna get those rocks up on his side of the field, which means Rotom's, uh, usability goes down significantly. Um, now I can go straight into Vikavolt here. Vikavolt does do okay against the Celesteela in a one-on-one, -on -one, uh, but I don't outspeed it, and he can do a lot of damage to me if he's running a lot of attack investment, and I don't Oko him. Um, I can also go out into my Ditto to kind of see what set he's running, um, and take a little bit more damage on Ditto, but be more or less fine. Um, I did see a lot of Z fly in my mock battles. I also saw a lot of Autotomize, and so I kind of want to go into Victini here, um, threaten this thing out, potentially, um, with Rotom Heat where it's at. It's not really switching to Victini. So I'm going to go into Victini. Victini can handle this thing. It is a bulky Teeny. Um, it is designed specifically to handle a Celesteela. So we are going to go straight into it. Um, sub, sub Celesteela was always, always, always a problem for me. Um, there was never a time Sub Celesteela was not a problem. But we are going to click V Create here um, and get this thing to get this, just break the sub. Um, so we, I knew that this thing was going to be a, a significant problem. Um, and at that point, I would have loved to go into to Vika Volt to break this up and go out to Victini afterwards. So I sort of wish I had taken my gut on that one and done that. Uh, now, I, I see him going Fly in EMZ. I don't see him going Ground EMZ just because even though it handles Victini much better, um, Mega Venusaur was a much bigger problem for this thing. So I definitely see him having gone fly any MZ instead, if he is a Z move at all. Um, so we're gonna go for the V create here, and gonna hit this Celesteela really hard. Um, I know we do lose a little bit of defenses here. Obviously, it breaks the substitute. We're gonna see what he's gonna go for. Um, defenses drop. Is this ground EMZ? No, I think, it, I think that's Supersonic Sky Strike. Um, and that's you know, annoying, but Z fly. So he's got fly. Um, but we do take it. Um, it does like 50%. So yeah, so now we have a chance. Um, he can't kill me with Earthquake, even at minus one right now, um, because of the Shooka Berry. So Earthquake's gonna do like 30, like 20%, does a max of 45 um, if he's, let's say he's like max attack out of it. I just wanna know. I just wanna know. Does a max of 52. So he can't kill with an Earthquake from minus one. Um, I, he, we know he doesn't have an Aka Berry. I am gonna click V Create again. Um, I don't believe I outspeed him here. Um, the only risk with this is if he goes for a fly um, an actual fly, uh, then we miss our V-Create, but, um, then we just switch out on the fly, and that's fine. So, um, and Victini survives, but he, he might think he kills with an Earthquake, um, but he doesn't, because Shukaberry Victini's insane. Um, oh wait, I forgot to calculate the minus one. He might kill with an Earthquake here. It's possible, if he's like Max Stack Adamant. But, uh, if he thinks I'm running a ton of speed investment, then I could still outspeed him at minus one, um, for one. Um, two, I could easily switch out into Vikavolt. So, we are gonna, I would've, yeah, so we are gonna threaten him out here. Uh, we're gonna get a big V-Create off on Latios. Uh, it's gonna take a little Stealth Rock. We're gonna take a big V-Create here, um, which is A-OK -okay by me, and we get a safe switch out of our, well, not safe switch out, but we switch out our Victini just fine, so that's down to 50%. We obviously can't stay in. Um, if he Pursuit Latios right here, I mean, I don't even think it learns that, but if it does, wild. Um, what a play. Exodrill is too important to hard switch it in, although it is a pretty good counter to most Latios set if he's not running like Surf and Scarf. Um, he could be Scarf. Based on his team comp, I I kind of want to run it, go into Ditto. Um, but if he 
if he goes for a big like Draco Meteor right here, um, the only switch in here reasonably is Tornadus. Um, so I think that's going to be the play. I think I go into Tornadus here, and then I go into Vikavolt on the following play, um, no matter what. Now, we are going to start, like, this is where this team starts to break down a little bit. So, um, he has Roost. Well, that means he's probably not Scarfed. Um, and if he is, he's going to switch out here. And I can click Knock Off here and feel pretty good about it. We haven't revealed it yet, so... He's got the Culber. Okay, okay, so I see you. Um, so there's a Psychic. Roost, Psychic. We live in on one. Um, I'm gonna obviously click Knock Off again. There's no reason to switch me myself out here. Um, not really, not really a reason to preserve this at this point. Um, with, with two Scarfers on the team, and knowing that he's not Scarfed, um, and knowing that he doesn't have a, a fairy type, I can bring in my Ditto on the following turn and hit that big dragon type move and take this thing out with whatever HP it's got left. Um, and it does survive on a, just a tiny little bit, but that's okay. Um, so Latios kills Tornadus I with Psychic. And at this point, Ditto can come in uh, pretty safely with that Scarf and go for a Psychic um, that would kill from this range and hit everything else in his team super hard, except maybe the Celesteela. Um, let's see what coverage he has. Let's see. So he's running Hidden Power on this thing. I don't know what Hidden Power he's using, but he doesn't have a Dragon-type move. He does have Shadow Ball, which can't hit the Mega Lopunny, so I don't want to click that. Psychic is obviously the best play here. Um, Hidden Power is not a bad play in case he does go into the Rotom, but I think Psychic would still kill the Rotom anyway. Celesteel is his only switch into this reasonably, except if he's predicting a Shadow Ball, then he goes out into his Mega Lopunny, but he could lose that on a Psychic, and there's no reason for him to do that. So, but then if I click Shadow Ball and he dies, he just goes out into the Mega Lopunny on the following turn. But I'm going to switch out anyway, no matter what uh, he goes into on the following turn, because there's no reason for me to stay in. So, I think the play is click Psychic, because I'm going to switch out no matter what. Um, and there's the Psychic, so he is going to go down, so ditto, ditto kills Latios with Psychic. Um, so now he's either expecting that I am Scarfed, or he thinks I won the speed tie. So there is the Celesteela, uh, which is taking a little bit more damage, and how much does this do is the real question to a Celesteela. I don't think I want to stay in, um, but, uh doesn't break a sub. That's the important thing. So I, I definitely don't want to stay in. Um, substitute Celesteela is a big problem for my team. We saw Fly, we saw Sub. Um, and that's all we've seen so far. So Vikavolt is still my answer to it. Victini is still an answer to it. Um, he's going to set up a sub here. We know he's going to do it. He doesn't have leftovers because he had the Fly, or the Z Fly. Um, but I think Vikavolt is the switch in here. He could go for an Earthquake predicting the Victini to come in, um, but I'm going to go out into Vikavolt here, which is going to be able to click Volt Switch on the following turn, um, and there's the Substitute. So yeah, if he hard switches into Mamoswine and loses his Substitute, I'm okay with that, and if he doesn't hard switch into Mamoswine, he's going to go for, he might go for a Fly um, to outspeed, or to, to, to avoid the attack, um, but I can take a Fly, so I am just going to click Volt Switch here. Um, You know, it isn't the end of the world, and then the following turn I can just go for a Volt Switch again, take the Fly, slow Volt Switch out into... Yeah, there's the Fly. So we expected that, um, and that is okay. I am... <laughs> That's such a silly animation when Excel Steel does whoop! Bye! Uh, but yeah, so we're just gonna go for a slow Volt Switch here, break the sub, and go out into Victini and be able to click another huge, uh, another huge V-Create. Um, because that Fly is gonna do very little. So we do have to be in range, obviously, again, to take fake outs from Mega Lopunny. That is really where the, the goal of this is to be at the end of the day. Um, but we are going to Volt Switch out, and we are going to be able to go back into Victini here. Um, without rocks on my side of the field, V-Create is so free right now. There is very little reason, though, for me not to click... <sighs> not to click Will-O-Wisp. Rotom Heat's the reason not to click Will-O-Wisp. But Rotom Heat dies to the V-Create on the following turn. But I'm not running Speed Investment. But he doesn't have anything to hit me with. Well, he does. He has Thunderbolt. 
V Create is free. Um, taking out the Celesteela is free, and then and then Excadrill wins the game, and I think he knows that. That's the other reason to click Trick Room here. But if he does go for like a sub here, that's terrible. So we're just gonna click V Create. Um, he's gonna switch out. What is he gonna switch in? What's gonna die? Uh, it's Shaman. So Victini's gonna kill Shaman. All right. Uh, so Victini kills Shaman with V Create. Um, so that's down, and his Latios is also down. So that works for me. Um, and what are you gonna go into? What is your switch in? to my minus one minus one minus one victini right now mega low punny is it mega lop yeah there's the mega lop so obviously victini is too important uh handling celestila to do anything risky with it um vika volt also extraordinarily vital uh for the mammoth swine late game if i can get that trick room up so victini still has a ton of use to me I could go out into my ditto predicting a fake out, but if he does go straight for a high jump kick or something shenanigan like that, then I am, then I probably lose the game. So Excadrill is the safe option. If he goes for a high jump kick, he goes for a high jump kick, and I go into my ditto. Um, if he goes out into, or excuse me, if he goes for a fake out, then I outspeed and can get a big earthquake off. Um, Celesteel is still alive, so I could go for Iron Hand instead of Earthquake, which is probably what I'll do, um, just in case I want to get some damage on the Steela. But we are gonna get the Mold Breaker here. Um, and there's frustration, so uh, he doesn't go for the he doesn't go for the high jump kick, but he doesn't go for the fake out either. And at this point, I think Iron Head is the better play, um, just because it does hit the Celesteela on the switch in, which rocks plus two Iron Heads should bring it down to low enough where it can't sub rock plus Iron Head should bring it down to where it can't substitute. Um, I don't believe it gets recovery outside of Leech Seed, so um, you know that's that is what it is. Uh, if he does go for that leech seed, I do have the ability to switch out um, something like the Vika Volt, Volt Switch, switch like get something else in. Slow, slow Volt Switch. <laughs> wow, that was a struggle. Slow Volt Switch is going to come in so clutch this week. Um, so he is going to switch out his Mega Low Punny. He is so afraid of this. Mick Heaterson comes out. This is going to take 25% from Rox. Um, it's going to take an Iron Head here. It's not going to like that. And Rotom Heat does survive. Um, he does get the leftovers, but I do believe I did enough damage to where another Iron Head will kill. That confirms that I'm Scarfed? Do I care? No, there's nothing I want to switch into this thing, so we're just going to go for another Iron Head here. Um, now, obviously, the quad resistance doesn't help. Uh, having gone for an Earthquake there would have been really nice because it wouldn't confirm anything that I was Scarfed or not, but um, we do take him out with a second Iron Head, so I don't really mind confirming that I'm Scarfed. Exadrill kills Rotom Heat with... Uh, Iron Head. You don't write that very often. Celesteela comes out. It's going to take Stealth Rocks here. He has not confirmed that he has Earthquake on this set. I want to point that out. Like, I don't actually know if he has Earthquake on this Celesteela. Um, and Iron Head's doing 17 to 21%, which is great damage. He's under 25. So if I do two of them, Unless he has left uh, Leech Seed and Protect as his last two moves, which would be a crazy weird set. Sub, Fly, Leech Seed, Protect? What set would that be? Now, the only reason I'd want to preserve this Excadrill is because it handles the Mamoswine super well. Even a Scarf Mamoswine doesn't deal with it. Um, so that would be a reason to preserve Excadrill and go out into Vika Volt here. But um, I can always set up my Trick Room with Victini on this Celesteela. Um, and then bring Vika Volt in and win the game that way. So I could go out into Ditto, um, but I think Ditto does better as a Mega Low Punny, and at some point he's going to have to let that happen. So I think the play right here is to go for another Iron Head. Um, I could get a big flinch here. Um, so we're going to go for another Iron Head here, and not very effective. Get the flinch. Let's go. Iron Head again. Um, we needed some hacks at some point this season. That is like the first, I think that's the first hacks outside of crits that I've gotten this entire season. <laughs> um, last battle, you know, all of the Sludge Bomb misses. The first battle, I don't even know what happened. I was paying no attention to the battle, but we do take out Celesteela. So Excadrill comes in. Excadrill kills Celesteela with Iron Head. And now it's Mega Low Punny, uh, which has to take an Iron Head here. Uh, he can fake out, but whatever. Um, and Mamoswine. So, 
the real question is, do I switch out um, and and preserve this thing? And the, I think the answer is no, because I do have a Choice Scarf Ditto sitting in the back. Um, and that can handle... A Choice Scarf Mamoswine has to lock itself into Icicle Crash. Right? Because it can't hit Vikavolt with an Earthquake. Now the other option is going out into Vikavolt. Um... On this, on this Lopunny, letting it die. Then going out into... Or Victini. Letting Victini die. Because what does Victini realistically do for me at this point? Yeah, we're going to go into Victini here. We're going to preserve our Excadrill. Um, there's really no reason for it to take Fake Out or, you know, other damage. Um, so Victini is going to come in here. Him not getting his rocks up has been massive this game. There's the Fake Out. That's fine. Um, we're going to let Victini go down here. It isn't a big deal if it does. Um, at this point, I think the only play realistically would be Click Willow is in case he switches out. Um, there's a quick attack, so we do get some information. That's really interesting information to have, actually. Uh, it means Ditto can't safely... Isn't, like, the safest of options, but but it means Excadrill might be. Um, although I don't kill from here. And a Choice Scarf quick attack will put him in range to die um, from an Earthquake or an Iron Head from Excadrill. So... And then Vika Volt should be able to take one Icicle Crash from a Mamoswine. Um, but let's let's not get ahead of ourselves here. We have not won this game yet. Um, the real question is, yeah, uh, yeah, Icicle Crash doing 51% max from and let's that's that's jolly. Let's say Adamant. Let's say Adamant. Um, it does max 96 damage, but he could flinch me. Um, now the real question is, how much does a Quick Attack from a Low Punny? Low Punny. Let's say, uh, he, we know he's adamant. Um, let's say adamant. Quick attack. Due to a low punny. Um, 30%. It does 30%. So let's take a look at what his set is. Let's, let's just learn. Let's take a look. Let's all know together. Is there a fighting type move? There is low kick. Low kick could kill. Quick attack cannot. So he's going to give me scarf low kick to handle a mega low punny and a mamoswine. I appreciate appreciate the offer. Really, really glad that Ditto came this week. I saw this matchup and said Ditto me scarfed mega low punny needs to be banned to Ubers immediately. And everyone that I talked to was like, that's because it's illegal and impossible. And I was like, it's neither. It's totally legal for me to bring my Scarf Mega Low Punny this week, guys. And yeah, he's not gonna go for the uh he's not gonna go for the quick attack there. He knows that that low kick does a lot. So Ditto kills Mega Low Punny with low kick. The big question was going to be if he had drain punch. That was the one thing that I was worried about. Um was if he had drain punch, what do I do to that? Because it doesn't Oko. But now I just get to click low kick again. I do outspeed any set possible unless he's running like the slowest possible mega low punny and the fastest possible mana spine for this exact situation doesn't appear to be that way mega low punny scarfed mega low punny everybody kills everything um and oh my god great game to randy and the texas rangers your new york empoleon are getting in the win column in the gba d league i know that we had a couple of tough losses but hey we are one and two, but only a minus one differential. So if you guys think that that means that we're out, that is obviously not the thing that I'm thinking right now. Vika Volt was an amazing pickup week one. We showed how it can be really powerful in this format. Um, I think this team has so much potential to move on and do well, but I need to start getting some wins and I really am going to start prepping like I prep for this battle. So go check out Randy's side of the battle. I'm going to absolutely watch his side of the battle. This was an amazing fight. I am so glad that it went the way that I hoped it would. Didn't get any hacks um, on my side. Obviously, the, the Iron Head flinch may have mattered depending on what the rest of his Celesteela set was. Anyway, thank you all so much for watching. I will take no more of your time. I hope you guys had a wonderful time watching this battle. I Every battle in here has been hype and amazing, and I'm so glad to be a part of the GBA D-League.